Hello everyone, it's Amy, and welcome back for week 157 of Build Your Sash and Craft. So we're starting off on our fourth year, and I thank you all very much for following along, all of my old subscribers and my new subscribers, and those of you who haven't subscribed but you just like to watch. Thank you very much for your support. I really appreciate it, and that's what kept me going all of this time. If you have anything that you would like to see me try and make, please leave a suggestion. Suggestions are always appreciated because sometimes I think, mm, I don't know what I'm going to do next. So it, it's really great if you have something that you say, well, I'd really like this or that, but I really can't afford to buy it. Let me know. We'll see if we can make it. So, but what we're going to do today is, I don't know what we're going to call it, a scratch off surprise, I guess. It's like scratch off tickets. And you can use it to make scratch off tickets, but you could also put it on cards, you can put it on tags, um, you could put it in the page, just right on a page of your journal. And the person you're giving the journal to can scratch it off and see what kind of a surprise you've left for them underneath. So I have already um, made it and put it on some different samples here so that we can try it to see what works before I show you how to do it. And I thought, I'm going to let you watch the scratch off reveal right along with me. So I haven't done this at all. So if it doesn't work at all, well, then we're really going to be surprised. Um, but and then afterwards, I will show you how we make the scratch off paint. So to start with, okay, to start with the very first video I watched on these was they said to <laughs> I've totally lost my train of thought. They said to write down your little um, thing for your scratch off ticket, um, write down your little sentiment or whatever, and then color over it with white crayon. Okay, and I thought, mm, I don't know that I even have a white crayon. And to me, the white crayon would actually make it more white. So I didn't want to do white crayon. And then I saw a couple of them do it with packing tape. So it's like, okay, cool, packing tape. But what I had thought about with the crayon was I didn't have a white crayon, but I had our um, wax that we used to make our wax colors. And this is, um, I got this at Walmart. And we have this in our stash if you're following along. And um, so this is just a, it's a wax that's semi-hard and semi-soft. It's not a real hard wax, but it's also not a liquidy wax. So I tried that also, and I tried it just on plain glossy paper. So we're going to see how it works. I did not do it with crayon, but we're going to see how it works with our wax, and we're going to see how it works on glossy paper, and we're going to see how it works on packing tape. So I'm going to start out here. This is the packing tape. Now, I also made some with a blue acrylic paint, and that was this blue primary blue, um, or apple barrel primary blue, and this is kind of a thick paint. Um, it's, you know, like sometimes you get your acrylics and they're really quite thick, and sometimes you get them and they're really kind of thin. This one is kind of thicker, so I also pulled out one for our sample that's thinner, so that we can see about coats, because I only had to use one coat of the primary blue. Now this is a non-metallic paint, and metallic paints seem to be a little semi-transparent anyways, and everyone I saw do them, they were all using metallic paints. So I also made it with metallic paint, but the metallic paint did require two coats, possibly even three. Um, where I did it here, it would definitely need to be three coats, probably this whole thing. So, um, so the metallics are gonna take at least two coats, and you have to let it dry for about an hour before you put on your second coat. Once you put on your second coat, before you were going to stick it in a journal or something, um, I would let it dry overnight because you want it to really be dry. These have been drying for about six hours altogether. And so we're going to try. This is packing tape with the blue paint and packing tape with the gold paint. What I did was I took packing tape. This is um, a, a sticker label where I have peeled the sticker off already. And I keep the labels and use those sometimes when I want to make something, you know, that's sticky and I want to make it ahead of time, I put them on here so that I have my own stickers. So what I've done is I've taken the packing tape and I have just attached it to here so that I can peel this off and then I could put this like right on the page of a journal. I'm going to grab, let me just grab this book out right here. 
I found this book at the secondhand store and I use it for tags because it's really great actually. The name of this book is The Garden Planner and it's by John Walker and it's a time life book. Um, and the reason that I love this is because it has all of these little tags in here. So what I did when I, I wanted to paint some so that I would have it done ahead of time. Let's say I, I want to just have some in my stash so that when I decide I want to make something, I can just go ahead, peel my tape right off of my sticky back and put it right onto the tag that I made. We'll just say that my tag was this size, or it doesn't really have to be. So you're going to put that on there. And actually what I should have done was actually trimmed around it first. wonder if I can get it off. We'll see. I will do that with the next one. Okay, so then you could put that in your journal. You'd cut it like a tag and put it in your journal, and then whoever gets it, they can scratch it off to see what picture is underneath. And that's my thought with these, not necessarily so much the, the um, like lottery tickets, but just so that the person who gets it, it's covered up, and they're like, well, what's under there? And so they get to scratch it off, and they get to see what the surprise is. And I just think that is really cool. And like I said, you could do them on cards, you could do them on tags in your journals, on a page in your journal, or you can actually make them as scratch off tickets for someone for their birthday or something with some sp with special messages underneath. And it, and it scratches off really nicely. You know, like it, it makes this fine. And actually you could probably take this and glue it onto something or even put it on a piece of packing tape on the back side just as some 3D interest. Just kind of spread that out. Where is my packing tape? Right here. I'll show you what I'm talking about. You could just take a piece of packing tape, put it sticky side up, and just sprinkle that on there. Give it a little press. And then this is what it would look like and you could actually stick that on a project. It would look like little gold encapsuled on your project. So that's kind of cool. Hadn't even thought about that. Of course, you'd want to press it down better than what I did there. Take your release paper. Put that on there and give it a press because that's not going to stick to your it's not going to stick to your tape. And what I mean by this is, like I said, any of your stickers that you get, anything that's sticky and it comes on something where you can peel it off to use it, this was actually an address label for some um, um, postal packages that I sent out. And these were just the priority mail tags. And I keep, when I, when I make out my labels, I just keep these so that I can use them to stick my own handmade stickers and that type of thing on. So there we go. So we've got that, and that's what it looks like. That's really cool. That's a bonus because I hadn't thought of that. I'm going to cut this off. I'm going to remember to fold over my tape so that I don't have to try and get it unstuck again. And there we go. But see, isn't that fun? And that worked really well. Now this piece um, was a piece of packing tape. You know that because you saw me stick it on there. But see, the packing tape doesn't really distract, especially since this is kind of a shiny, um, a shiny material. So that's what you can use them for. You can make them. You can make them ahead, right on your packing tape right on a, a release paper so that you can just peel that off and let's say we just want to put a little window onto um let's say a card or something you can just cut off a piece of it there we go and now i still have all that to use and then you'll just take that let me see And then just leave a little message for someone. Let's 
say you got this pretty card or whatever and you just write them a little message underneath I love you and then you just put this right over top of it now this is on their card and they open on up their card and you've written on there maybe even just in pencil if you want to or just a little sticky note or something that says scratch here okay I don't know how to spell alrighty and then when they get it they can go well what's under there and it works really well so on the packing tape works great love it so we know for sure that it's going to work now we're going to try it on <laughs> excuse me we'll try it on these tags now like I said the blue only had to have one coat of paint and let's see how did I do this I took I cut a tag and then I folded it in half this half I didn't put anything on it's the same shiny paper out of this book and I thought that paper might be shiny enough that I would not have to put anything underneath of it so let's see if that works It's harder to scratch. And I'm shaking you all over the place. I do apologize. It works, but it does not work well. You do need something, I would say. You need something underneath of it to, to make it better. So over here, I have done our wax. I On the bottom half, I waxed the whole side, just took a sponge and just brushed the wax right on there. The top I left exactly like it was, just, just painted right on there with the sponge. The bottom I buffed it off. So we'll see how this works. So first we'll try where we buffed it. And that's, that's not too bad. It's a little bit harder than the packing tape. Definitely not as hard as no, nothing at all. And this um, tag has flowers underneath of it. White flowers. So the white you see is not me scratching all the way through the paper. It's the white flowers coming through. And so this is what it looks like with the wax buffed off. It's okay, but some of the crayon still stays on there. So still not necessarily, it's not as good as the packing tape. So let's try it with on the top where it was just the wax, but I did not buff it off. I just left it on there. And that's coming off really nicely. yeah that came off really nicely so that's just wax now my only question is going to be um like let me see it comes down to here so let's say it's in your book and it just accidentally something rubs across it it could kind of pull that off does it feel extra sticky let me try a piece of paper i'm going to take this piece of paper and i'm going to try and press it on there really hard to see if that sticks and it didn't so I was afraid it might stick to the page in front of it and then when you opened it up pull it right off so it didn't really do that it could over a lot of time you could put if you're gonna put it in a journal or something you could put a uh, just a piece of parchment next to it so that it doesn't stick but that works really well so really the two best options to me would be packing tape or our wax that's just painted on and left not buffed off before you before you paint it and so and with this one it's the same I did I buffed it off on the bottom here and I did not buff it on the top now this one is um, like orange flowers so that one is where it's buffed off 
This is the one where it's not. But the one where it's not buffed off, I think definitely would need a third coat of the metallic. But yeah, that works really easily. This is just the tag itself. It's shiny paper. And the gold is working better than the blue did. The metallic, of course the metallic is a bit thinner. So that one did okay. But I did kind of scratch the picture a little bit. And then this is um, packing tape. And so we have, here is where we buffed it. And that kind of scratched the picture. To You know, you had to scratch hard enough that it kind of scratched the picture. Then we have our, our wax, just solid wax without buffing it off. Here we have nothing at all, but it also scratched the picture. And then here we have our packing tape. And I would say if you have packing tape, that's really the best. This works almost as well as the packing tape, but you have to have the wax. And it's probably harder for some of you to get the wax than it is to get the packing tape. So we're going to do it today, and we're going to do it with the packing tape. So I'm going to show you how to do that. But see, isn't that just fun? That's fun, and you could do a tag where you just put some of this just in different spots, and they get to reveal different pictures. I really like it. I think it's fun. So I'll show you how to do it. It's really simple. And like I said, I, I looked it up here. I was remembering when I was younger... And we used to like color on a piece of paper with crayons and then you'd color really hard on top of it with black, with a black crayon and then you would scratch it off. And it's kind of like those black scratch offs that you get nowadays at the store in a kit. Um, and so I was actually trying that and either the crayons aren't as well or I was just more impressed as a child because it doesn't work really well. Um, and I was using cheap crayons, so maybe the Crayolas work better. I don't know, but I wasn't impressed with what I got this morning. So then I got to thinking our, our daughter gave us scratch-off tickets for Christmas for fun. And, um, you know, just because they really are fun. And um, so that got me to thinking a long time ago I saw something on the Internet where... It said homemade scratch-off tickets, so I looked it up, and there was a ton of videos. So that's where I got this from, and they're all pretty much the same recipe and everything, and I do apologize, I didn't write anything down, but this is the one I did where I colored it with crayon, and then I colored it with black crayon, and then tried scratching it off, and it really, this one I colored with colored pencils and then black crayon. It really doesn't work very well. Here I tried heating it, heating the black after I did it. That does not work at all. So... So to make the paints for your um, for your scratch offs, it is one part dish soap to two parts paint, and then you just mix it together. I'm just going to use a plastic spoon. Now we don't have dish soap in our stash, but. I'm going to take it that probably most people have some form of dish soap. This is Dawn, and um, I've used, seen, I saw people use Dawn. I saw them use Clear. They used a lot. Now, this is, I believe, going to be a very thin. This is quite thin. See, it's pouring quite thin. And I picked this one on purpose because, like I said, your craft paints, some of them are thin and some of them are really thick. And so I, I shook all my paints and I picked the one that felt like it was the thinnest. So we could see if it's going to need two coats or one coat, just so you kind of have an idea. On a time frame, too, you know, if you're thinking, how long is this going to take me? One coat takes less time. Although when it really comes right down to it, you're going to want to let it try and dry overnight. So you'd have to let, if you have to double coat or even triple coat, you have to let it sit an hour between. But if you're going to let it sit overnight anyways, it really isn't going to be that much more time. Just mix it up really well. I picked a container that I had emptied something else out of. Um, from earlier this year 
and it has a lid on it, so I'm not exactly sure how long um, these will last like this, but they will probably last a little while with the seal on top. So we've got it all mixed up. And I'm just going to wipe my hands off. <coughs> And then you're just going to take something that you want to put it on. You can do it on, I did all of these on pictures, so you can do it on a picture. You can do a whole card and just put a picture in the middle. You can take your tape and find a picture. Let's do that. Hold on a second. Just grab another one. I'm going to grab another one of these cards. I was trying to find one with just like a big rose or something, but I don't find any, so I'll just grab this one. So you could just take a piece of... I've lost my scissors. Oh, under the book. Okay, and then maybe just cut a little surprise, put it on the tape, and if you make the tape just a little bit bigger, all the way around. There, I'll tape it like that. Now that's covered with our tape and that is our little scratch off right there and then all we're going to do is we're going to take a sponge I like the sponge brushes but you can use any kind that you want to um, for something like this um, this sponge brush is about as wide as the tape and they don't leave streaks quite as bad sometimes as a bristle brush except this one has a big chunk out of it so it's going to leave a mark anyways and then you're going to want to put it on I like to kind of like get it across the whole thing. Turn it around because I just kind of want to try and have a straight edge at the top. Just so it looks nicer. There we go. Okay, and then just go ahead and kind of thickly just kind of brush it on there and because this paint is thinner and a lighter color it is definitely going to take two coats so that's what I wanted to see so if you have a dark paint that's quite heavy bodied you might be able to just do one coat if you have a thinner or lighter colored paint this is both so I don't know exactly you know if it's the thinness or the lightness that makes it see through but the other thing is if I could get rid of the little marks on here I'm just trying to get rid of my brush strokes really and they sometimes they do get bubbles in them from um, the fact that you've got the the dish soap in there um, but you could leave it like this and then they would be able to kind of see an outline of where to scratch it off but if you were writing something on there um, then you might be able to actually see the words through it 
So I would just count on two coats, let the first coat dry about an hour, and then put a second coat on. And then like if this was the front of a card, you know, you would decorate it up top and bottom. I'm gonna let this dry and put a second coat on it, and then I'll be back. Okay, I just came back. This has dried for about an hour, and I've stirred up my paint. And we're just gonna put a second coat on here. I have one little spot that still looks a little wet, so we're gonna see if it's right here, and we're gonna see if this is gonna be okay or not. It might take that little bit of non-dry paint away. But it might be dry enough that we'll be okay. We'll find out. And again, a nice thick coat so that you've got a nice amount of paint to scratch off. And I'm gonna just turn it around and come back the other way. I find it makes it a little bit easier to spread out. And we'll just get that on there. And it looks like I did kind of peel a little bit of the paint away right there. I'm trying to get the bubbles off. Okay, so there we go, and that should give us a good cover. If you have a lot of bubbles, you can just try and kind of drag across and take them to take them off. There we go, that's pretty good. Alrighty, so we'll let that dry. And I did take the piece of tape where I had put the gold scratch-offs on, and I put that across the bottom, cut it like a tag, and then you could decorate up the top and put a hole in it, and you would have a tag you could put in a journal or in a card or whatever you might want to do with that. Now also, um, I just wanted to show you really quickly how to do, this is a piece of non-stick paper. This is... Um, off of a label that I had and I'm just going to show you you just put it on like this uh, your your clear packing tape okay and then you're just going to paint over top of it and this is how you make and you just want to put it, you know, you only have to put it on the tape. You don't need to, it doesn't matter if you get it over the edge. It's not going to hurt anything because being that this is release paper, it will just peel off right along with your tape. But you're just going to do it like this. And because we know that this didn't cover really well with one coat, um, we might want to come back and put a second coat on after this one dries and then you can set this aside just like we did with these ones and then you can just peel it off and use it whenever you whenever you want to I just wanted to show you how I put the packing tape on the release paper and then paint it on top and let it dry for you know for something that you can use anytime that you want to so I'll be back when this one is dry and then we'll scratch it off and see how it worked. Maybe. Maybe not. So, but I will be back. Okay, I'm back to finish this up. And um, this is the one that we can use to put anywhere on a tag or a card to make a scratch off. And so that we have this ready ahead of time. And I'm going to keep that for another time. We have the tag that we made. And I'm thinking that I'm going to finish off this tag and I'm going to put it in my journal on a budget um, journal, put some writing paper on the back because I think that would be fun. And we, you know, we have this one that we did to show how you use the, the anywhere rub offs or scratch offs. 
And then here is the one that we scratched off to see the different areas. And so then the final thing that I have is instead of scratching off this one that we made, um, I used my, my blue that I had um, made ahead of time. And I didn't have a lot, so I put it on in pieces. And I'm going to scratch this off because this is something that I just want to say for the new year. Because I think that this is something that all of us really need to remember. And it is one of my favorite quotes. It is just something that I thought about once when I... I heard someone talking about their life being ordinary. And I thought, well, that's a good thing. Ordinary is not bad. We don't have to have everything be super special. So I thought of this saying, and I thought that I would bring it to you today. So it says, an ordinary life is... What is an ordinary life? It all depends on how you look at it. I'm gonna save the most special word for last. And so here we go. ordinary life is an extraordinary life. We all should be happy for what we have and be grateful for what we have. I hope that you all have a wonderful new year in 2020 and I hope that you enjoy your ordinary life because everything that we have we should be grateful for. So I am going to show you what we need for next week. For next week we are going to need I got this at the Dollar Tree. It is just a metal ruler, and this will just be nice for tearing. Um, I've been seeing people use these, and I saw this at the Dollar Tree, and I thought how wonderful to be able to get a nice metal ruler. The plastic ones that we bought way back at the beginning, mine are really getting to where I can't read the numbers anymore. Of course, they've lasted us three years for a dollar for three of them. They were definitely worth it. But So we're going to pick up a metal ruler, and... If you don't have it in your stash, I still have some in my stash, but some Elmer's school glue or some of the Dollar Tree school glue um, will work just fine. We may be using a little bit of our glycerin, um, but or we may be even using some vinegar, but wait until the video to see how things turn out before you pick up vinegar or, or glycerin, which I still have glycerin in my stash, so you probably might have some too, but we definitely need some school glue. If you've got that in your stash, you're going to spend a dollar. If you don't, you're going to spend two dollars. So I'm going to take two dollars off of our budget for this week. That'll put three dollars still in our bank. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you have fun making some little secret scratch-offs because I think that they're just so fun to do. And I think that they're great to add onto a tag or add into your um, or onto a card. So thank you very much for watching. I really do appreciate it. And I hope that you have an extraordinary 2020. Bye-bye.